found, come thou King, come thou precious Prince of Peace, hear your bride to you we sing, come thou found of our blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we're celebrating the feast of St. Clair of Assisi, a friend of St. Francis of Assisi, and also the foundress of the poor Clares. Let's open our hearts to the Lord and ask the Lord to forgive us our sins. Lord Jesus, as far as the east is from the west, you cast away our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you leave the 99 sheep and go after the one lost sheep. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you make all things new. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in your mercy led St. Clair to a love of poverty, grant through her intercession that following Christ in poverty of spirit, we may merit to contemplate you one day in the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, but you mortal, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. I looked and a hand was stretched out to me and a written scroll was in it. He spread it before me. It had writing on the front and on the back and written on it were words of lamentation and mourning and woe. He said to me, O mortal, eat what is offered to you. Eat this scroll and go, speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. He said to me, Mortal, Eat this scroll that I give you and fill your stomach with it. Then I ate it, and in my mouth it was as sweet as honey. He said to me, Mortal, go to the house of Israel and speak my very words to them. The word of the Lord. sweet to my taste is your promise. I delight in the way of your decrees as much as in all riches. Your decrees are my delight, they are my counselors. How sweet to my taste is your promise. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How sweet to my taste is your promise. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. With open mouth I pant, because I long for your commandments. How sweet to my taste are, is your promise. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Te 
take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a child whom he put among them and said, Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you in heaven their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray. Does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And he finds it. Truly, I tell you, he, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the Poor Clares, St. Clair founded the Poor Clares. When I was in high school, m most of my friends and I, we, we had summer jobs. And I don't remember exactly how much money we made. It seems to me every summer we'd make maybe two or three thousand dollars. Now imagine at the begin beginning of a summer, um, someone were to approach some of the teenagers and say, listen, there are some startup companies that are about to go on the market and their stock is about to go through the roof. You should consider investing. And the young people know that this guy is experienced, he's wise, he's a good person. But one of them says, yeah, right. If I'm going to make money, I'm going to buy new shoes, I'm going to buy video games, I'm going to buy a new bicycle, I'm going to party with my friends. I'm not investing any money. Another one's a little more wise and he says, well, maybe I'll invest $100 of what I make this summer into these startup stocks. And then the other person says, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in. Every single penny I make, I'm investing in these stocks. I'm going to wear old shoes all summer. I'm not going to waste money or spend money on, on, on things. I'm going to do without. I'm going to be poor all summer. I'm going to invest every single penny I make into this startup stock. And lo and behold, by the end of the summer, the stock starts to go through the roof, and by Christmas, the $3,000 he invested is now worth $3 million. Wouldn't that be nice? I can come up with any number. It's my story. The point is, is to me, and again, I could be wrong, but I'm convinced, I'm convinced these, these young men and women who decide to leave everything and join a convent, you know, the poor Clares or a monastery or whatever, I'm convinced that... As the Lord says to the rich young man, he says, go, sell what you have, give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, then come follow me. And the Lord Jesus speaks of reward a number of times in Scripture. It's a concept I don't understand because everything is grace, it's gift. We don't, we don't earn anything. We don't deserve any reward, but he speaks about reward given to people who make sacrifices for him. So when we look at these, these sisters, you know, the poor Clares, so many of them too, really do live quite simple, humble, poor lives, you know. Now the thing is, if you look at these sisters, and by the grace of God over the years, I got to spend quite a few times with different sisters, traveling around, I even got to, to, to preach, do retreats for sisters. Um, many of these sisters, oh, they have the joy of the Lord. They radiate the love of God. And as they grow into old age, you can tell that the Lord has indeed transformed them 
in, into saintly ladies, you know, saintly, saintly brides of Christ. And, you know, there's no question in your mind their reward will be great in heaven. Now, not all sisters. You know, some, some sisters kind of don't come across as, you know, joyful or a little cranky, but, you know, praise the Lord. We know, of course, that any life, including the consecrated life, it, it, it's not easy Oh, the, the, the loneliness they must experience at times, the, the, you know, the, 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 maybe the questioning, the sadness, or whatever. There's no, no question that, that there's certainly dark valleys and difficult times, not to mention dark nights. If the Lord is transforming them, He's, he's purifying them into saints. Um, but I'm going to share one little thing with you from the gospel. The Lord Jesus says, um, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. This is the key scripture for people who do children's ministry. You welcome a child in Jesus' name, you're welcoming Jesus himself. And one of the kind of struggles with religious life these days is years ago, we desperately needed our religious sisters and, 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 and brothers because they were doing things that were critical, taking care of the sick, educating children, especially poor children. But now, Typically, the government takes care of these things. And I think one of the, the struggles some religious communities have is to find a mission that's meaningful, that's important. Now, I visited a friend of mine who's a young Benedictine monk. His monastery runs a school, St. Louis, Missouri, that he, he claimed, and the, there was you know, documentation, this school is apparently like the, the top-rated school in all of the U.S. And year after year, phenomenal school. And this Benedictine monk said, our monastery is unique. In our monastery, every single monk works for the school in, in some way. Some guys teach, some guys clean the toilets, other guys take care of computer work, other guys are retired and intercede, offer up their sufferings, but there's no other work. And he said, among the Benedictines, they're kind of the envy of other monasteries. Because one of the things that some monasteries, or almost all the monasteries are struggling with, is different monks doing different jobs in different places. And this particular monastery, because there's a unity in mission, there's a, the, the, again, the other, the other monks, the other monasteries say that you have kind of a, a spirit of unity, unity and mission that we envy, that, that, that is uh, it, it, remarkable, uh, but also their work of educating the young. If there's one thing that's still desperately needed today, it's to bring the Catholic faith to our young people. The government is not taking care of that. And as time goes on, it's more and more of a desperate need. We need Catholic schools that form our young people into good, devout Catholics who understand the faith and, and, and who have every opportunity to embrace, embrace the faith. We can't have schools where when our, our young Catholic people graduate, they have absolutely no interest in the faith or little interest, and they stop practicing the faith. That's a crisis. Like, that's a serious problem. We need to do something about that in the places where that's happening. And so again, to me, perhaps now might be the time for new communities, consecrated people who give their whole life to, to, to receiving children, welcoming children in Jesus' name, bringing them up in the Catholic faith. And again, perhaps from the experience of this Benedictine monastery, perhaps, you see, the Benedictines, they take a vow of stability. Did you know that? They're the only community that do that. Stability. Perhaps religious communities should consider having a certain stability in mission. We're going to do one thing. We're going to do it well, all of us together, and, um, and, and you know, bring the kingdom of God in a particular way. So just a thought. I don't think the Lord's calling me to found a, a, a sisterhood, you know, maybe he is, you know, that, that educates uh, children. I think it'd be a beautiful thing, not for me to do, but to, uh, to see happen, you know, throughout this country, throughout the world, little schools run by sisters, all they do is, is educate, bring the Catholic faith, and live a holy, consecrated life to Jesus. Let us pray to the Father to make us worthy of being his beloved children. 
that the church may become an effective instrument in the deepening of the faith of children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders may show deep concern in securing a better tomorrow for all children, and that these little ones may be free from all forms of abuses, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That parents may nurture their children in good moral values and give them proper training and education, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may have childlike confidence in God, the Father, who cares for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may be led back to the house of the Heavenly Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intention of today's Mass, for the repose of the soul of Muriel Cobb, offered by Linda Cobb, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayers of your children who trust in you. Give us a childlike disposition, for your kingdom belongs to little children. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for our hearts always hunger for you are the one that we praise you are the one we adore you give the healing Our hearts always hunger for our hearts always hunger for our hearts always hunger for. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin Blessed Clare, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Terence and Marcel, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Clair, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. You, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, roof but, but only say the word, and my soul, soul shall be healed. healed. Almighty, infinite Father, faithfully loving your own, here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for our hearts always hunger for you are the one that we praise you are the one we adore you give the healing and grace Hearts always hunger for oh, our hearts always hunger for oh, our hearts always hunger for an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of Blessed Claire, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. Heavenly Father, pour out your wonderful blessing upon your children. Heavenly Father, fill your children with your delight. Heavenly Father, let your presence make its home in the hearts of each one of these, your sons and daughters right now. Father, with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, come and dwell in these temples of the Holy Spirit. Lord, let these, your children, radiate your presence. And may the blessing of Almighty God descend upon you now, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and remain with you forever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, Michael, the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. Be, be our safeguard, safeguard against, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May we God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And, and do thou, thou Prince of the, the Heavenly Lord. Host, by the power of God, cast God. into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. As I kneel before you, 
As I bow my head in prayer, take this day, make it yours, and fill.